So there are definitely some reasons that you might want to mix your own D76. There are definitely some benefits and I'm gonna get into that here in this video. So today we're gonna get a little into uh, mixing your own chemicals from scratch, specifically D76. This was something that was asked, um, I think it was after I did my uh, video on split toning or sepia toning, uh, mixing that, that someone had asked about um, mixing D76 from scratch and if I could do a video on that. And I thought about it for a while and at first I, I didn't think there was a lot of merit in doing this video, uh, especially I sat down and I kind of did a cost benefit, which, which I hadn't done in the past. I just happened to have the chemicals to actually mix it on hand. But I sat and looked at, so is there a savings here? You know, can you save a ton of money if you start mixing your own develop, uh, D76 from scratch? And apples to apples, if you include shipping, um, at least from Photographer's Formulary, unless you buy a ton of it, uh, the bulk chemicals, there really isn't um, much savings as far as money goes. And I was really shocked when I actually broke it down because I thought for sure, oh yeah, you could probably save a ton of money. I think a, a pack of D76 is about nine bucks. And I kind of broke it down into, you know, if I, I were to buy this much of each chemical, you know, making that much. And, I, it, and at first I think it actually came out to be a little bit more. So I kind of put the idea on the back burner. And then I was actually mixing some D76 the other day and so there are definitely some reasons that you might want to mix your own D76. So mixing your own D76 might not be beneficial for everybody, but there are definitely some benefits and I'm gonna get into that here in this video. The first one that, that struck me as kind of something that I never really thought about is that I don't always order a ton of, of said developer, be it if I, if I order HC 110, I usually order a bottle of it. If I order D76 or say ID 11, I'll order a pack or two. And that leaves me not always having it unless I'm really on top of reordering it, which is kind of a pain, you know, or you order a, a ton of it at once. And you know, it used to be back when I was, you know, back when I was growing up, I could just go to the camera store and buy it, which, I can't do that anymore. I have to order it from New York, from California, um, you know, from someone that actually stocks it. So the fact that I have all these chemicals already in my dark room, it, not so much peace of mind, but I know I can always make it. I don't have to worry if I have a pack laying around or if I have to, you know, if, if I have to like go and order it and it'll be here on Friday or, you know, however long the shipping takes. So that was the first real benefit. I already have all these chemicals, so, I can just make it when I want to, um, which is really kind of like I said, more of like peace of mind. I know I, I can always develop my film, not a big deal. Um, the other one is that it kind of does result in a cost savings for me. And it would be a cost savings for anybody that does have, um, do a lot of darker work because the, the one that stands out the most is the sodium sulfite. So I use this, I, I stock a bunch of, you can see I got the big container. <laughs> Um, because I use that as a hypoclear. So because I stock it and I use it as a hypoclear, sodium sulfite is something that I always have a ton of. I also always have a bunch of metal and, and this is actually getting pretty old and hydroquinone, hydroquinone. I think that's how you say it. That's how I say it. That's how I say it. Yeah. Um, the only one I, and, and borax and those are the four ingredients you need to make D76 on your own. So I kind of got to thinking, well, if, if I'm already, if I already have sodium sulfite and I already have these things, then it really kind of is a cost savings to me because I don't have to buy special packages of D76. I can just make this stuff up. So that was the other thing that I thought was really, really interesting. And you know, the fact that I don't have to buy a specific hypoclearing agent, I just use sodium sulfite and I use that for fiber-based papers. I just take you know, I take two or three tablespoons into like two liters of water and, and that, that works just fine. Um, so yeah, so between those two things, I think um, it's definitely worth my while to stock the chemicals and to know how and to be able to mix it myself. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and just show you how I do that. Uh, like I said, it is four, it's four chemicals. I mean, it's pretty easy. It, uh, it's a hair more difficult. And I say a hair because you also need a scale, which I paid $10. And this isn't like an analytical scale by any means, but it, it, it does a good job. Um, so it's a hair more difficult. You need a scale. And instead of just dumping all the uh, chemicals from a pack in, you simply weigh four chemicals up and mix them in, in order. So the recipe that the recipe that I use is from the Dark Room Cookbook. Let's see. And it is on page 217, Kodak D76-1927. It says, this developer is good for low contrast and maximum shadow detail. The commercial product marketed by Kodak is the world's best selling black and white developer. Now I do love this as a black and white film developer. That's not necessarily what this video is about, but it, it is amazing. I know it's a little bit on the vanilla side when it comes to developers, but that's kind of a good thing. It, it just does a really good job. Um, so you need water, two grams of metal, and this is for one liter. Water, two grams of metal, sodium sulfite, hydroquinone, quinone, yeah, five grams of that, two grams of borax, and water to make one liter. And then it says dilute one to one. You can use it undiluted, but there is no advantage in doing so. So then there is a very um, kind of interesting note in here too. Well, there's variations. There's, I mean, there's um, recipes in here for divided D76. I'm gonna uh, refer back to another um, D76 recipe in a second, but the interesting part in here, it says many photographers feel that the original formula as given in the cookbook without the extras is superior to either commercial product. So ID11 and uh, Kodak, or Ilford and Kodak, sorry, they both put, um, a number of additional chemicals to prevent the metal from deteriorating in the presence of the sodium sulfite. So because they're mixed together, Kodak adds in that package, Kodak adds something to protect the metal from the sulfite. And this allows the formula to be sold as a single package. Now ID11 is sold as a part A and part B to combat that, but it sounds like there's extra chemicals and it eliminates some, though not all the extra chemicals found in the Kodak version. I just thought it was interesting. I don't, I can't say I've noticed any difference. Um, you know, I use ID11, D76 at one to one, same time, same temperatures for the same films. Everything looks looks the same to me. Um, in the um, ones that I mix from scratch, they look the same as the ones that I bought packaged. So this is an awesome book. If you can get your hands on one, I would recommend it. The other thing that I will say about D76 and it being nice to mix your own, because I used to buy packs of ID11 on the five liters, and not that I never will again, but you have to use, you have to develop quite a bit of film to go through those five liters. And the way this works with the hydroquinone, um, if you let D76 sit for like longer than three weeks, it starts making a hydroquinone sulfate or something it, it starts changing to a different chemical and it can really increase the contrast and increase grain in the negatives i haven't noticed myself um but i develop a ton like when i do have those five liters i usually go through it pretty quick so but that's just a little tip and warning if you have d76 you're going to want to use it fresh you're going to want to use it in the first couple weeks to keep things consistent because it does chemically change over time um that being said, it'll probably develop your negatives for, for years. The stock solution will last for quite a while. Um, the one last benefit, you know, this stuff, uh, the metal, I don't go through a ton of. These dry chemicals will stay good for a long time. We're talking years and years and years. Uh, metal might be the only one that's a little bit iffy, but I've, I just uh, was reading through some, some posts on APUG and someone was referring to that they had 50 year old metal and it worked like it was brand new. So metal, probably saying that wrong too. Um, point is, is that these chemicals are not going to go bad sitting separate in a dry, cool place, keep them out of the light. So, all right. Anyway, enough rambling about all that. We're going to get right to this. Um, 
the first thing you're going to start with 750 mils of water now i'm using i have a really good water filter system in my house so i'm using really good filtered water and i have been for quite a while um, you can use distilled i would just be consistent with whatever you're doing so i would recommend a really good um, purified or, or filtered water or distilled water and then stick with that method at least for a while so i'm going to throw the uh, water in the microwave i think i put it in there for one minute and so i'm just going to take a little coffee break while we do that all right so this was room temperature water and i zapped it in the microwave for about two minutes and this is 750 mils of water and it is right at 52 degrees celsius so there you go um so the first thing i'm going to do is turn the scale on here and i just have one of these little artist plastic trays uh, to find my stir stick so you, you clearly you're going to zero the scale out you hit the tar and then the first ingredient is two grams of metal 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 I'm just gonna weigh that up. And then the important thing here is that you add the ingredients in order. Whenever you find a, a, a recipe or anything for uh, darkroom, uh, particularly developers, fixers, anything like that, just follow the recipe in order and add them in that order and mix and dissolve them fully in that order. Metal. So now I'm simply gonna dump that in. Next, and this one's the only one where it's a little bit much for a dish this size, but next is 100 grams of sodium sulfite. And I just keep a, a, I just bought a bunch of scoopers and I just keep them right in here. That way I'm not cross contaminating and just seems easy to do. It's usually about four tablespoons heaping tablespoons. Exactly. So that's number two. And this is the one that takes the, uh, the hardest amount to dissolve. And it's five grams of, I'm gonna have to look up how to properly say this. Five grams of hydroquinoin. I've used it for years, but never really, that's just how I say it, never really paid much attention to how to actually say it. All right, so it's five grams of this. Two grams of borax. In. 
And sometimes I'll just dump a little bit back into the dish to get any of the residual. Probably not necessary. So once you got it mixed up real good, then you're gonna just go ahead and take your water. And right now it went from 750 to just shy of 800 to the 100. And that looks good. You're gonna mix that up. Grab yourself a funnel, uh, amber glass bottle. And if I know I'm gonna be super, super busy, um, I will put a date on this, but I know I'm gonna end up using this up immediately. I've got some film that I plan on developing um, pretty much right away. I'll probably wait till tomorrow just to let this cool down. But that's usually when I, I mix it, I, I have a plan to use it right away. But if you don't, I would just put a date on it. Um, that way you're not going way past that three week, you know, that three week date and you're still using pretty fresh developer. I just switch it up to make sure nothing gets left on the bottom. But like I said, it was all dissolved in there. And you can kind of look too. You just want to make sure there's nothing, you know, no, um, like, residual powder kind of goo on the bottom, but if you mix it up good, that's not gonna happen. And there you have it. You can rinse that stuff out good. And this is actually one of the 950 mil bottles that um, I referenced before. And it, it holds, it says it's for 950, yeah, amber glass, 950 mils. It holds a liter perfectly. So, I mean, there's just a tiny bit of air in there. Um, so, yeah, that's for that. And there you have it. That is how you mix your own D76 from scratch. And like I said, I definitely think it does have its merits, especially if, if you know, when you start using sodium sulfite for your HypoClear, you start, you know, wanting to mix some other developers to kind of figure that out. I think it's a, you know, it's a really good valuable um, thing to have as well as this book. This book has got so many cool formulas and recipes in it. Uh, but let me go back, because there was another D76. Ah, oh, here it is. So this is, it's in here, it's formula number 19, D76H. This formula is indistinguishable from Kodak D76 and can be used exactly the same way, including the same development times. It has the advantage of costing less to make, being more environmentally friendly, and being more stable than D76. So it looks like it really just omits the... Hydroquinone. And so it's water, metal, and it ups the metal a little bit to two and a half grams. Um, the sulfite's the same and the borax is the same. So that's interesting too. Um, I'm just sticking to the, the classic, but if you want a uh, more environmental, mentally friendly, go with two and a half grams of metal and omit the hydroquinone and keep everything else the same. So there you have it. I hope this was useful to, um, to somebody out there and it's, it's really easy to do. And like I said, I'm just gonna let that cool and then I will go ahead and develop film with it tomorrow as I normally would with uh, D76. If you found this video useful, um, please hit the subscribe button. Um, give me a like, leave me a comment down below and let me know, you know is there anything else you'd like to see um, you know, the goal of this channel is to keep the darkroom alive and keep the information as available as possible, especially moving forward. Um, these things kind of get lost and, um, you know, I want to make sure that, that any information out there for people is definitely available if they want to find it. So, all right, till next time guys.